video on easy math okay today let's discuss about straight lines position of two points related to a given line means there is a line and there are two points you should find the position of two points means they are on which side of the given line okay first first let's see how to check whether two given points are on the same or opposite sides of a given line okay let there be a line of equation ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 and there are two points p x1 comma y1 and q x2 comma y2 the coordinates of point r means there is a point r which divides the line joining p and q this is not related to our concept this is just an formula for finding the point r such that it divides the line joining any other two points in an ratio m is to n that is mx2 plus nx1 by m plus n comma which is the x coordinate comma my2 plus ny1 by m plus n which is the y coordinate okay this is the same concept we are going to discuss now that is but it is a small there is a small difference that is in our case the point R, there is a line which passes through the point R and another line joining P and Q and those lines are cutted with each other with ratio M is to N. The ratio of the parts divided in the line PQ is M is to N. And now, if this point lies on equation 1, right? Here, R lies on the equation 1, right? Because R is the point on equation 1 which is divided by line from line passing through P and Q. So, the coordinates of R lies on the line. So, if we substitute those values, A, X value is MX2 plus NX1 by M plus N plus B into MY2 plus NY1 by M plus N plus C is equal to 0. Okay, now if you simplify this or <laughs> or in other words if we take m plus n as an lc then you will get a into mx2 plus nx1 plus b into my2 plus ny1 plus c into m plus n right if we simplify that we will get the following equation m into ax2 plus by2 plus c plus n into ax1 plus by1 plus c is equal to 0. Then if we send this second term to the other side, it becomes m, m into ax2 plus by2 plus c is equal to minus because here it is plus in the other side it becomes minus minus of n into ax1 plus by1 plus c. If we send n to the other side and ax2 plus by2 plus c to the other side then it becomes m by n is equal to minus ax1 plus by1 plus c by ax2 plus by2 plus c. This is our required ratio m is, m is to n or m by n. If the point r is in between these two points, if the point r is in between these two points, then points P and Q are on the opposite sides, right? Then the ratio would be positive. The ratio would be positive if they are on the opposite sides. How to prove that? Let's see. Okay, as you can see here, the point R is in between P and Q. That means minus M by m by n is greater than 0 means minus ax1 plus by1 plus c by ax2 plus by2 plus c is greater than 0 or that implies ax1 plus by1 plus c is by ax2 plus by2 plus c is less than 0 that means that ax1 plus by1 plus c and ax2 plus by2 plus c are of opposite signs right they will have opposite signs because if this should be negative that means that these two have opposite signs right if they are opposite signs it will be negative or it will be less than zero 
or it will be greater than zero. So if the point, what will happen if the point is not in between? Point R is not in between P and Q. That is, point P and Q are on the same side of the given line. Then the ratio would be negative. Therefore, from equation three, we have minus a x one plus b y one plus c by a x two plus b y two plus c is less than zero. That means if we take off the negative sign based on inequalities, the following equation becomes greater than zero. A x one plus b y one plus c by a x two plus b y two plus c is greater than zero. That means those two equations have the same sign. Okay, there's a, those are not equations; they are just values, because we know the values for x one and y one and x two and y two. So it, these are just values. As you can see in this picture, thus the lines, the two points x one comma y one and x two comma y two are on the same or opposite sides of a straight line. A x plus b y plus c is equal to zero according as the quantity is. A x one plus b y one plus c and A x two plus b y two plus c have same or opposite signs. Now let's discuss a concept called as point of intersection of two lines. Point of intersection of two lines means it is the intersection of two lines. Okay. You know that if there are two lines, then they may intersect, right? They may they will intersect in most of the cases, but in some cases like means A one is equal to A two and B one is equal to A two, B one is equal to B two, then then these equations does not intersect or will be coincide. Okay, now. Let's take these two equations of straight lines. Suppose these two lines intersect at point P x one comma y one. Mean these intersects at the point P x one comma y one. So P x one comma y one satisfies the following equation. So a x one plus b a one x one plus b one y one plus c one is equal to zero, and a two x one plus b two y one plus c two is equal to zero. If we solve these equations by cross multiplication, we will get x by b1 c2 minus b2 c1 is equal to y1 by c1 a2 minus c2 a1 is equal to 1 by a1 b2 minus a2 b1. So if we solve them, means if we take the first and the last parts of this equal of this equation, then you will get x1 is equal to B1 C2 minus B2 C1, which is in the denominator of the first term, by A1 B2 minus A2 B1, which is in the denominator of the third third part, and similarly Y1 will be C1 A2 minus C2 A1, which is denominator in the second part by A1 B2 minus A2 B1. Hence, what will be the coordinates of point? The coordinates are x1 comma x2, right? So the coordinates are B1 C2 minus B2 C1 by A1 B2 minus A2 B1 comma C1 A2 minus C2 A1 by A1 B2 minus A2 B1. These are the coordinates of the point of intersection. It seems difficult to remember, right? But you should remember this. Okay, to find the coordinates of points of intersection of non-parallel lines. How to find the coordinates of point of intersection of non-parallel lines? We solve the given equation simultaneously for the values x and y. So, obtain, determine the coordinate of intersection. That means that this is the not only way. Means there is not. That means that there is only not. There is not only a single way for solving the point of intersection of two lines. Which is this formula here? But there is also an other way by solving normally means by reducing those coefficients to zero. Let's see how can we solve that in that way in an example. It's a quadratic equation: x square plus 
root 3 plus 2 x plus root 3 minus 1 to 0. This is an equation. This is an equation, quadratic equation. Then it has two roots. They are m1 and m2. Show that the area of triangle formed by the lines y is equal to m1x, y is equal to m2x and y is equal to c is root 33 plus root 11 by 4 c square square units. Okay. How can we solve this and what are the required formula for this? Okay. The required formula for this are the first one is finding the sum and product of roots of a quadratic equation and the formula for finding the area of triangle. We will see that later. First, let's solve this. M1, M2 are roots of this equation. Therefore, M1 plus M2 means sum of the roots is minus B by A, where B means the coefficient of X term and A means the coefficient of X squared term. That means minus root 3 plus 2 by coefficient of x square, which is 1 in this case, by 1. There is no need to mention 1, so minus root 3 plus 2. And m1, m2 or product of roots is the c by a. c means the constant term by a means the coefficient of x square, as we discussed before. So, you will get root 3 minus 1. And... Now, we should find m2 minus m1. Okay, if you don't know how to find m2 minus m1, there is a formula in algebra that is a plus b whole square minus a minus b whole square is equal to 4ab. So, based on that, a minus b is equal to square root of a plus b whole square minus 4ab. So, you will get the following equation. Ro square root of m1 plus m2 whole square minus 4 m1 m2. Means you will get square root of root 3 plus 2 whole square minus 4 into root 3 minus 1. If you solve this, this in the first you will get, in the first term root a plus b whole square, right? a square means 3, root 3 whole square means 3 plus b square means 2 square 4, 3 plus 4, 7, plus 4 root 3, means 2ab, minus, minus 4 root 3, minus 4, plus 4, minus 4 root 3, and plus 4 root 3 cancels out, and then you have here, plus 4, and here plus 7, 4 plus 7 down, which is root 11. Solving the equations, y is equal to m1x, y is equal to m2x and y is equal to c. By solving those equations, we will get the coordinates of vertices of the triangles as 0, 0, c by m1, c, c by m2, c. These are our required equations. Okay, if you don't know how to solve them, just y1x is equal to m2x. Okay, you may think you can cancel out x, but if you do that, you will not get the solution. So, get the m2 term to the other side. Then you will get m1 minus m2 into x is equal to 0. Means x is equal to 0. Similarly, if you substitute that in the first equation, you will get y is equal to 0. And similarly, from these two equations, second and third and first and third, you will get the following points. So, the area of the triangle is half into modulus of or half into determinant of 0, 0, 1, c by m1, c by m2, 1, c, c, 1. Okay, this is the determinant. If you don't know determinants, go check it out in the internet. This is the formula for area of a triangle. That is, determinant of x1, y, x1, y1, 1 x2, y2, 1 and x3, y3, 1. If we take these points as x1, x2, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. Then if we solve this, means in determinants, I hope you check that in the internet. We should take any row or column. In our class, let's take the first row. And we should solve that. 
If you solve that, you will get the following. C, C by M1 into C. Means here, first two are zero terms, right? So we can neglect that. And if, if we take the last one, we should take the one and we should delete that row and column. Then you will get the determinant of CM1, CM2, C and C. If we solve that CM1 into C, you should multiply crossly. That is how to find the value of the determinant CM1 into C, which is C square by M1 minus CM2 into C, which is C square by M2. If we take C square common, you will get half C square into M2 minus M1 by M1 M2. M2 minus M1 is root 11. Half C square into root 11 by root 3 minus 1. And if we rationalize that, I hope you know how to rationalize. Rationalize means here we have root 3 minus 1, right? To rationalize that, we will multiply that. We should delete the square, right? For deleting the square, we can use the formula a plus b into a minus b is equal to a square minus b square. For that, we will multiply this with root 3 plus 1. If you multiply that, you will get 1 by 4 into 1 by 4 c square into 11 into root 3 plus 1. If you multiply that, 11 into root 3, root 33 plus root 11. One by four c square into root thirty three plus root eleven. If you see carefully, that is our required solution. Okay, guys, this is for today's video. If you like the video, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell icon. It notifies you when I release a new video. If you have any doubts, comment down below. I'll answer them in the next video.